Hey, this is Presh Showwalker. Here's a fun little logical puzzle. You start with four empty glasses that are right side up. In each move, you must invert exactly three different glasses. Invert means that if a glass is facing the right way up, you have to turn it upside down. And if the glass is upside down, you have to turn it right side up. Find, with proof, the minimum number of moves so that all the glasses are turned upside down. I saw this in a tweet by UKMT. That's the first part of the question. Now, let's consider the general case with N glasses. You have N glasses right side up. Each move consists of inverting N minus one glasses. For which N is there a solution? When there is a solution, what is the minimum number of moves? I saw this generalization on Puzzling Stack Exchange and a wonderful solution by Caleb Stanford. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. We'll first start with the four glasses case. So after I worked it out, I was very interested in how you would prove that it's the minimum number. So I looked at the official solution that was posted, and here's what it said. We show one way to turn all the glasses upside down in four moves. It may be checked that this cannot be done in fewer moves. Well, that's not very helpful at all. You'll see sentences like this in mathematical textbooks across your studies. So don't give up at this point. I usually try and search online to see if anyone has provided the details so I can corroborate my answer. Or now we can actually check other resources. So I put this in ChatGPT and it did give some possibilities, but in the end it gave the wrong answer. It ended up putting all three glasses right side up and it said the answer was three moves and clearly the answer is four moves. So this is wrong. I then put this in Google Bard and it gave an even funnier answer because if you just looked at it and it had all the technical details, you might think it knew what it was talking about. But it says it can be done in only two moves because of course you check the base case of one glass that can be done in one move. Then you assume in K moves to turn N glasses upside down, you can use the inductive step and blah, 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 and it would say it would be done in two moves. But once again, this is wrong. So the official solution doesn't help us and neither of ChatGPT or Google Bard can help us. So it is the little gray cells that we must rely upon. So let's work it out. So in each different move, we need to turn over three different glasses. So there are four choose three because there are four glasses, which is four factorial over three factorial times one factorial which equals four possible ways to invert the glasses in each move. So you might think we have to check four things in each different move, but not so. Since the glasses are identical objects, we can reduce the number of cases by just considering which glasses are up and which glasses are down. I'll show you what this means in a second. So in the first move, there are four different ways that we could invert the glasses. But look at these four different cases in all of them, exactly one glass is turned up and three glasses are turned down. So we can treat each of these cases as basically the same result. So we just want three glasses that are turned down and one glass that's turned up. So we might as well just consider the first case. So move one will always result with three glasses being turned down and one glass turned up. So now move two. We could invert these three glasses, but if we did this, we would end up with four glasses right side up. And that brings us right back to the beginning. So that would be a waste of a move. So instead, we're going to do another possibility. We're going to turn two glasses that are down and the one glass that is up. We could pick the first two glasses, we could pick the next two glasses, or we could pick the first and third glass. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're going to pick two glasses that are down and one glass that's up. 
So after move two, we end up with up, up, down, down. Two glasses that are up and two glasses that are down. Now, where do we go from here? We can either pick two glasses that are up and one glass that's down. So we could pick either of the one glasses that's down. But if we did that, we would end up back at move one. So this would be a counterproductive move. So we can't pick two glasses that are up and one glass that's down. We need to pick the two glasses that are down and one of the glasses that's up. That will result in the following, which is one glass that's down and three glasses that are up. And now we just invert the three glasses that are up and we have all four glasses are down. If we do any other move in this step, we're going to end up with a different result. So this is the move we want and we've completed the objective. So the answer is you can do this in four moves and this is the minimum number of moves. We will now consider the general case with N glasses. The solution is described in two cases. If N is odd, there is no solution. There's no way you can get all of the glasses facing down. If instead n is even, the minimum number is n moves. While this solution is easy to describe, it's a lot more difficult to explain carefully. So the solution does involve a bit of notation. Hopefully it's not too intimidating. I hope the logic can be followed. So let's first consider the case that n is odd. Why is it impossible to get all of the glasses facing down? So here's how we can work it out. At the start, there are n, which is an odd number of glasses facing up. In each move, you are inverting n minus one glasses. That's an even number of glasses. And that necessarily leaves an odd number of glasses facing up. I'll explain this more carefully in a minute. To get all glasses facing down, you need zero, an even number of glasses facing up. Therefore, it is impossible to make all of the glasses face down. Now the second step that you're inverting n minus one, an even number of glasses necessarily leaves an odd number of glasses facing up. Let's show that a little more carefully. So we'll have to introduce some notation. Let ui be the number of glasses facing up at step i. Let di be the number of glasses facing down at step i. Let m of ui and m of di be the number of glasses of each type that's inverted in each move. So we will show that ui is always odd by induction. So at the very beginning, we have u0 plus d0. This is, of course, n plus zero, all glasses are facing up. n is an odd number, zero is an even number, we end up with n, so u zero is odd. Now in the very first move that we do, we're going to have to invert n minus one glasses. So we have u one plus d one, u one will have to be one, the number of glasses facing down will be n minus one, so this will be odd plus even, which equals n. So once again, we have the base case that's checked. U of zero and U of one are odd numbers. So we will now show that assuming UI is odd, that UI plus one will also be odd. So what is UI plus one? This will be the number of glasses that's facing up in the previous step minus the number of glasses from the previous step facing up that are inverted plus the number of glasses that are facing down in the previous step that are inverted up. So what can we say about M of UI and M of DI? So in each move, we have to invert N minus one glasses. So M of UI plus M of DI has to be equal to N minus one. Since N is odd, N minus one will be even. So we either have an odd number plus an odd number, that's an even number, or to get an even number, we can have an even number plus an even number. We can't have an even plus an odd. So there are only two cases to consider. Now, by the inductive step, 
UI is odd. So in both of these cases, UI will be odd. Now minus M of UI plus M of DI, when we look at odd and even, it doesn't matter if we have plus or minus, the parity is going to be the same. So we are either going to be having an odd number minus an odd number plus an odd number. An odd number minus an odd plus an odd will end up as an odd number. Or we have the second case where we have an odd number minus an even plus an even. And this again will be an odd number. Therefore, ui plus one is always odd. And we have shown the number of glasses facing up is always odd by induction. We can never get all of the glasses facing down. Now let's consider the case that n is even. We will show the minimum number of moves is n. Let's refresh our memory about n is equal to 4. Number the glasses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let ai denote the move that inverts all glasses but glass i. So let's see what happens. So in the first move, we're moving glasses one, two, and three. So we're inverting all the glasses except four. So the first move can be rewritten as A4. In the next move, we're inverting all glasses but three. So the next move is A3. The move after that, we're inverting all glasses except two. So this is A2. The final move, we're inverting all glasses but the first one. So this move is A1. So the sequence of moves, A4, A3, A2, and A1, do provide a solution in exactly N moves. So let's generalize this. Suppose we have N glasses, the N moves, AN, AN minus one, and so on, to A2 and A1, these constitute a solution. In fact, you can probably do any of the n factorial permutations of this because one move doesn't affect the other move. It only ends up where each glass ends up in the state of being down. In any case, this is a solution. Now, why is it a solution? So glass i starts facing up. To finish facing down, it must be inverted an odd number of times. Glass i is inverted in every move except a i. Thus, it is inverted n minus 1, which is an odd number of times, because there are n minus moves besides a i. Therefore, it finishes facing down. But this is true for every glass i, so this algorithm does in fact make every glass face down in the end. So we've shown this is an algorithm to get all of the glasses facing down, and it is in n moves. But is this minimal? How do we show that? There's a wonderful way that we can show this is minimal. So here's how we're going to do that. The first thing to observe is there are only n possible moves described by the set a1, a2 to an. There are no other moves you can do in this game. Let si be equal to the number of times move ai is used. Suppose there is a solution in a total number of moves s, which is equal to s1 plus s2 all the way to sn. In the solution, glass i is inverted in s minus si moves. Since this is a solution, the glass i starts facing up and it ends up down, so this must be an odd number. s minus si is an odd number. So let's sum up n of these odd numbers. So we have s minus si going from i equals 1 to n. s minus si, each of these is an odd number, and n is an even number. So we're summing odd numbers an even number of times. So this will end up as an even number. Let's simplify this sum. So the term s is repeated n times, so this is n times s. We're subtracting each si, where i goes from 1 to n. So we're going to subtract s1, s2, all the way to sn. But this sum is exactly equal to s. So n times s minus s is equal to s multiplied by n minus 1. 
But now we said this is an even number because we have n odd numbers. So we have an even number of odd numbers being added. So this will all end up as an even number. But n minus 1 is an odd number. And therefore, that means s has to be an even number because an odd number times an even number will be an even number. But from before, we had s minus si is an odd number. So if s minus si is an odd number and s is an even number, we have an even number minus si is an odd number. And that means si has to be an odd number. Each SI has to be at least 1. It can't be 0. So S is equal to the sum of the SI, which is greater than or equal to 1 for each of them. So S is at least N, and therefore N is a minimal number of moves. And that is the proof. What an incredible problem. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.